Hello everyone, today in this video we will be discussing the 5th which is the last module of BDA and in this video we will be learning what all you need to mention in the answer script from these questions which are most expected from exam point of view so that you can expect nice marks and how do you remember the key points ok so before starting if you like this video hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel ok so uh, this um, document link can be found in the uh, description box ok so let's get started um, the first question is what is ANOVA and correlation indicators ANOVA is nothing but but analysis of variances variances means differences if there are differences in something you are analyzing the differences difference 1 difference 2 difference 3 these are the differences in different objects okay by using the differences you are analyzing something that is called as analysis of variances it is not always that if there is a difference that means they are totally different it might be due to some sampling or experimental error okay there is no significant difference that exists this discovery is done by the analysis of variance so what's the first point you will be writing it is a test method that finds whether the fitted results are significant or not this means that the test finds out in first whether to reject or accept the null hypothesis it is a statistical test that means the hypothesis is having no significant difference it's just a difference due to the sampling or experimental error these three key points you have to write first after that you have to write about the correlation indicators what is correlation how much two things are related to each other if one thing is increasing is the other thing increasing or not that is positive correlation negative means if one thing is increasing other thing is decreasing and non-linear um, correlation means what if it is increasing or decreasing that does not depend upon the other uh, factor getting increased or decreased these are three types of correlations and some factors are there which relate these correlators that is called as correlation indicators so we'll be learning about that what is correlation indicators correlation is a statistical technique that measures and describes the strength and direction of the relationship between two variables and in the relationship and correlation uh, training model sample data it's used for statistical analysis okay so uh, uh, if you want to calculate the correlation between the two variables x and y it is depicted by the r you have to use this formula r is equal to 1 by n minus 1 x minus x by sigma x into y minus y by sigma i when i told x minus x x minus x right x minus x like that you have to uh, keep in mind okay and uh, by sigma x and by uh, sigma y this is the uh, formula which we'll be using and the definition of these terms is given here go through it the next super important question is the uh, what are the different types of regression okay the regression means what the analysis of the different variables that is called as regression whether it is increasing or decreasing it's very closely related to the correlation but the formula we will be using is different okay so regression analysis fac uh, facilitate the prediction of future values based on dependent values okay so non-linear regression is there uh, uh, simple linear regression is there and multivariate linear regression is there so what does uh, these terms mean the first thing you have to write is about the simple linear regression in simple linear regression it is dependent on just one variable okay it will be like of the form y is equal to ax or bx plus c and so on okay so it will be just dependent on one variable called as x and it is a simple and widely used algorithm it is a supervised uh, ml algorithm for predictive analysis these are the key points you have tried for the simple linear regression moving on to the multiple regression you will have to write it is dependent on not just one variable but it is dependent upon many variables that is what is called multiple regression it's dependent upon two or more independent factors then you have to write the formula which is y is equal to a1 plus c1x1 plus c2x2 till cnx and these are the two types of uh, regression analysis moving on we have the third super super important question which is about the a priori algorithm here you can be asked the numerical as well so be prepared for it what you have to write for the a priori algorithm a priori algorithm is used for the calculation of association between two variables this is one variable this is two a second variable what is the association between this variable how frequently they are occurring in the each other that is called as a priori algorithm it is a frequent item set mining algorithm and association rule mining what is the rule of association between two entities that is called as a priori algorithm it is uh, it uses a large item data set and considers the subset of those data sets which is having the most frequency of occurrence okay that's all the things you have, what you have to write and two key points you have to write is after that is if a item set is frequent all its subsets will be frequent if abc is frequent obviously a b c a b b c and ac will be frequent on the other hand if ac is not frequent abc will never be frequent because ac only is not frequent how will abc be frequent it's pretty common sense right that is only the two points you have tried here after that you can add this formula and explanation here it basically says that if x is the subset of y the x frequency will be more or equal to than y 
okay and you have to write the evalu evaluation of candidate rules after that you just have to write ck is the candidate item set f is the frequent item set by using these two you'll be running a for loop where you'll be calculating the next frequent item item set and next frequent candidate item set and you'll be updating the values and keeping only those values which are most frequently occurring for example it's pretty uh, clear in this example you have four uh, test data sets here a uh, a c d a b c e b c b e and b c e now you are considering each one by one how many times a has occurred in this hole you will be writing here how many times b has occurred in this hole you will be writing here same goes for c and e whatever is less than 2 that will be eliminated okay so we'll be eliminating whatever is less than 2 and keeping what is more than 2 or equal to 2 like that we'll be considering 2 at a time what is more than 2 we'll be keeping it here and we'll be considering 3 at a time and then we'll be finding out uh, at, we'll be reaching at least one of the data sets which has the support count more than or equal to 2 that is our answer okay like that we'll be doing it and that is called as a priori algorithm working they might give you this table as well so be uh, be prepared for it moving on to the fourth super important question which is about the text and web mining here what we have is the um, text mining means what you'll be having some text and you are mining it mining it means what you are uh, ga gathering some relevant information from that if i give you a text you will be able to find out will you will uh, be able to find out the relevant information from that if yes that means you are a text miner okay what it uh, what you have to write is text mining is an art and science of discovering knowledge insights and patterns from an organized collection there will be a collection you will be fetching the information which is relevant and uh, it has knowledge it has insights and it has patterns and trends by using that you'll be able to know more about the type of uh, text it is and what you can be used for okay it helps in the frequency analysis of the important terms and the scientific relationships okay semantic relationships so for that we have a simple process if they ask about the process it's very important for you to draw this diagram then only explain so this uh, diagram consists of totally four uh, five steps in these five steps what you have to remember is first you'll be having some text data okay what you have to do is you have to gather some relevant information from that to gather some relevant information from that what you have to do is text pre-processing first will be pre-processing the text means if it is some having some useless redundant or irrelevant information remove that how you will do that text cleanup tokenization tagging word sense disambiguation parsing by using these terms you can easily able to clarify the text and clean that text okay now the text is very clean after the text is clean you are generating some features from it how you will do that bag of words stemming removing stop words vector space model after you have got the features you will select the features which are most relevant to you and most important for your current context so you'll be doing the reduction uh, dimensionality and the uh, ngrams method after that you'll be mining the data for what is whatever you are uh, required to by using clustering or classification which is unsupervised and supervised respectively after you have done that you'll be ready with the results you'll just analyze the results and visualize interpret the results and the results will be sent back to the uh, persons who are more uh, concerned about that okay so they'll make more analysis on that these are the five step process you have to make for sure this diagram and explain each of these more information go through this okay i've written all the steps in uh, detail whatever uh, it's happening so go through that next the second part of the question was about the web mining these two uh, questions will not come together it will come separate questions okay because it's very depth uh, questions what is web mining same as goes with the text mining you will be doing the uh, mining on the web that is called as web mining in web mining you will be discovering patterns and knowledge and insights regarding the usage of web okay and uh, and it could be classified in three categories the first one is the web content you are fetching whatever is relevant in the web content means whatever is the text link graph images or whatever it is you are getting to know what kind of images are there what uh, is the context of that where it can be used and what is the information behind that who has written that and what time it was uploaded all those things are getting considered in web content okay that is the html form web structure means how is the structure of the web defined what are the links present which websites are linked together most if one user goes to this website which website Set, the most probably the user will go next those all things are getting tracked in web uh, structure how is the structure of web web usage means which site is most visited how to rank the pages which is the most uh, frequent uh, visited uh, site for the particular topic all those usage analysis and how much time the user is using all those things are getting stored in the web usage statistics whatever i have mentioned are the super important key points i have mentioned for each of these and then only you will get the full marks 
and I've written some of the information here. For example, website can be designed in the form of pages with distinct URL and large website may contain thousands of pages. All these contains many information such as text, graphic, audio, video, form, application, more kinds of content, including user generated content. All these content are getting analyzed and mined. That is called as web content mining. In the same way, we have the web structure mining for that we'll be using two things, hubs and authorities. Hubs is a large number of interesting links and authorities are the persons or the links whom we will go to for finding out some relevant information for example the most trusted website for some academics purpose is some video website we'll be going to that video website right that is the authority of that uh, particular uh, topic like that uh, we have the web structure mining lastly we have the web usage mining how is the person who is using the web and uh, making use of it how is that uh, getting happened in a uh, smooth manner and whatever uh, the person is uh, using for what time it's uh, getting used all the uh, statistics and analysis is getting stored in web usage mining this much you have to add for the full marks moving on we have the last question which is page rank what is page rank rank of the page which uh, which page is the most best that is will be ranked the uh, top most right that's all what is uh, present here it's an algorithm that helps to determine which is the most relevant page and this algorithm is made secret why because humans are very smart what they will do they will optimize their uh, website based on what is the algorithm is so that's why to uh, keep the things fair that's why they'll be keeping this algorithm as secret and some of the good features of the website will be mentioned in seo which is search engine optimization this first thing you have to write for the page rank and you can give some example and explain in detail okay so that's all what was there in the module 5 make sure you hit the like button subscribe to my channel for more videos like this and thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one